Yes, guys. Hello, and welcome back to the Once You're In, You're In podcast, episode 116, we think it is. Um, and this week, it'll probably just be one episode because we've got to be done in about an hour. So we'll do we'll do a, a, a usual classic OG, special. yeah, a classic OG, O Y I Y I. Um, I'm going to let Reese lead the pod. I'm going to open my monster. You can decide where we go with I've this. I've already one. opened my monster. And, uh, I'd like to open mine live. Okay, get it. Get it. Come on, let's hear the... It is frozen, though, so it might not do it properly because I've had it... Oh, Ooh, nightmare. I've had it in the freezer all the morning. I usually find, like, 60 to 90 mins, like a good sort of time. A little bit of ice, but not too much. It's a slippery slope. Yeah, but though. I was driving here, so I had to calculate the defrost time. Yeah, have you calculated well? Or is it... Yeah, it's spot on. Fair enough. Right, sound. Well, usual. Like, I mean, we usually have a bit of a chat. It's been... When did we do the last one? Was it last week? Last Thursday? Yeah, we did one last week. Okay. Well, how has the last week been for you, mate? Well, you had your first... We can talk about the, the burger protocol. Yeah. Had your first five guys. I did that. Looking back, like, the, the benefit from it was minimal. Explain. I expected to feel a lot fuller and a lot better from it. You don't. <laughs> But it was it, like I, I put my story, didn't I? I was like, at the end of the day, it's just calories, yeah. And like, my calories on that day was still like 3,000, mm. so like, I'm not going to be overly full or feel great for it. Like, the meal itself was nice for the first like two minutes, I was like, oh, this is nice, but no. I wasn't like, oh my god, like, no, no I'm not, not at that point, and I don't think I'll ever be at that point. Like regards to food focus. If I'm being honest, I don't think many people get to that point. It's just people no. hype it up. It's the thought. Yeah. The thought of the food is way better than the actual yeah, food. Yeah, it always is. It was nice. Like It was more so nice like we obviously got to go and yeah, it was enjoy a, nice a meal. Yeah. But it was more so like I thought, right, cool, I'll, I'll probably feel pretty good tomorrow. I should see a decent look in the morning in terms of like increased fullness, sodium intake being a little bit higher. Uh, and the next day, I think I was like half pound up. My legs just felt so draggy. Like I feel, I, I felt horrendous in the past few days, but I feel better than I did last week in mm. terms of like my legs feeling. I think what what I should have just done is stuck to normal food and just had lower expenditure days, yeah. which I've obviously planned out like moving forward. So I've kind of planned like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are my quote unquote like main digging days with twenty thousand steps. Food is low cardio is 35 minutes and then thursdays and sundays which are my rest days slightly less steps because i'm not training so i don't get the steps from training so getting twenty thousand steps on those rest days is a little bit more challenging especially because they're quite busy work days even sundays at the minute are quite busy with like shows or getting everybody ready for shows or setting up clients and stuff um so i've brought my expenditure down on third well my steps down to fifteen thousand, but bumped up my cardio to 45 minutes which was the first time this morning which was sound and then friday saturday i'm going to have as like lower days and mm. potentially even accompany those with higher food days if and when needed especially before in the lead up to shows and i think i'm going to try and run with that obviously we have to assess it every day and yeah. that's kind of how i'm running things anyway like if i feel mint on a friday i won't be like right low steps and high food like it's more so a case of when I'm feeling trashed, just to try and hold on to performance. This week's been the first week where it's like, okay, like I'm not maintaining on everything or progressing mm. here or there. Yeah. It's like I'm maintaining on 75% and I'm losing on 25%. The red yeah, the pen, red yeah. pens come out, yeah. yeah. So um, Friday and Saturdays will be no cardio and like probably steps just where they fall, like, like 10 to 12.5. 12. 12. Yeah. yeah. And then if, if I need to, if body weight's still dropping on those days, I might accompany them with just like an extra 100 carbs pre and post, something like that, mm. something really minimal. I think I'd benefit from that, mainly just in terms of the Friday and the Saturday session being a quad day, weaker body part, and a posterior day, weaker body part. Um, Monday session's not that difficult, push. Wednesday session's not that difficult, back, although it was dr fucking dragging yesterday. Tuesday session is difficult, but I almost get the the hype, the boost from being at Rotherham, like Yeah, and also it's good kit, stability is yeah, always good. I like, just sort yeah. of get I always like that session, no matter how hard it is, it's not gonna be a bad session because of the environment and the equipment and the fact that I usually go and see my sister afterwards, so I've got to be done at a certain time. So it's yeah. like 
it kind of always ends up being a good session. Yeah, no, I get that. And the Wednesday, I found that the Wednesday, the Wednesday session Wednesday was fucking like brutal. Awful. Yeah, the Wednesday, it's funny. So, like, me and Finn have not as much anymore, but we had a very similar split. And the Wednesday session would come around, then it was just a pool session, the least demanding session of the week. Well, it's really because, not demanding. Yeah, because it's third Monday, yeah, row. it's the third day in a row. Every single time it would come around to that Wednesday session, and I'd be like, I'm absolutely smoked. That's a proper, like, <laughs> like yeah, I was uh, talking myself before yeah. the start yesterday. Yeah. But then I just I stick a timer on my phone, and I'm like, right, I've got this amount of time. Get the session done, like, make sure it's a good quality session in that time. And then when as the time is starting to like trickle down, I'm like, okay, I'm nearly done. Like superset everything. Yeah, just, just I don't, even, I don't, I don't do anything to the last ten minutes. Then I just rush through everything. Yeah, you just sit there and you're like, oh, but I'm, at, I'm at that point where it's like training is just another box to tick. It's not fun anymore. No. Like realistically, no, no, no. this is this is the enjoyable part for prep, but it's the horrible part of training. Like it's it's not the enjoyable part. I mean, it's the enjoyable part yeah, when because you're prepping not, now. This is this is a prep. Yeah, but know? even like you get to that point where it's not even enjoyable because like oh no, it's not. You it's don't horrible. like how you look. Yeah. You every time you pose, you, like I don't look forward to posing now. Going yeah. all like, I look, at least I'm looking decent. Like yeah, yeah. it's literally just have a routine and just don't miss regardless yeah. and just keep going. Like yeah. that's where I'm at, which is fine. I'm expected. And kind of where I need to be, and I think realistically, I, I'm happy with where I'm at. Still need to be leaner for the first main show, which is like four weeks away, but that's fine. I will be. Uh, I've got a practice show next weekend, which is just going to be gathering data. I'm not really going to peak heavily into that. I don't really want to be gaining much weight going into that. No, I'll just drop some fatigue. Um, I'll do similar to what I did for the Fitex, but probably slightly lesser. Um, not really gain much weight, drop fatigue. Have a have a look how I look. And then push on. Yeah. And then I think realistically, like, I'll be pretty much inside out for the UK FBA qualifier. And then after that, it's like show, rest for a weekend, show, weekend off, show. So it's like. For the UK FBA qualifier? You mean BNBF qualifier? No, I, I won't be inside out for that. Okay. You can, yeah, I was going to say you'd hope so for the UK FBA on, in September. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So when you said UK, you, because you said for the show in four weeks, like for people that not list like don't know as much, they probably go, oh yeah, that's the UK FBA Northern. No. The, B- the BMBF's in yeah. four weeks. That's the BMBF Northern. Yeah. I'll I'll be pretty much there for that. Yeah. But then a few more weeks. It's three weeks later. The UK yeah. FBA in September, the Midlands. Yeah. I'll be like pretty much a hundred percent for that, or close to, and then realistically just reverse into the shows for the finals just get fuller and fresher yeah that'd be the plan yeah. so i was looking through some photos yesterday i was on my instagram just scrolling back and like it makes you realize how flat and depleted you are when you see yourself like when i see myself at like 180 oh so yeah like what, 14 15, 14 pounds up from yeah. now and i'm like fuck i actually look really good there yeah, like it's did. a nice balance i remember of... saying to you do you not remember at um evo and i said i was like i like this sort of look for you it's yeah. because it's like you're. Ju- I said to you, you're just going to die from this point, and that's bodybuilding, even more so towards natural bodybuilding. But bodybuilding in general, even enhanced bodybuilding, you don't have a lot of muscle. Like I think if you can bring both, and I think being ahead and being ready early and being yeah. able to then, so like realistically, my, my food's like very, very, very low. If I could, I, I reckon I could be on another thousand calories per day going into the, the final show is not even peaking just mm. on a baseline oh yeah I think like, in which case I'll be looking so I much think better you get, I think a lot of people go, I've said this to like prep clients and it's the, how it is I think a lot of individuals get themselves confused with like they, let's say they're they're digging calories are like let's say 2,000 on a train day and like 1,400 on a rest day or whatever or 1,500 let's say 2,000 and 1,500 I think you get confused that that's like your set point of calories and it's like that's not your maintenance that's a, de- that's a deficit you know so your maintenance point yeah could you eat 3,000 and let's say 2,500 calories and do some cardio and probably maintain yeah you would and you wouldn't you wouldn't you would you be getting sharper would you look looking better no but would you be dropping off stress and fatigue yeah 100 percent. Yeah, it's also at this point like i'm not i'm obviously taking scale weight into account but nowhere near as much as i was like a month ago because like the difference between how i feel now versus like a month ago is very different oh yeah and i'm only like 
a few pounds lighter. Yeah, but you you get to that point where like you trickle down into that like there's a it's like a balancing act. Yeah, it's a seesaw. You get to a certain point and then you drop below it and you're like, oh. God. I think anything yeah. below one seventy for me at the minute, like obviously in terms of the muscle that I hold, etc. Like anything below one seventy, I'm like, okay, I'm pretty fucked. Yeah. Anything between one seventy and one eighty, it's like, okay, I'm I'm dieting. Yeah, yeah. Anything above one eighty, it's like I feel yeah, good, I'm, I'm maintainable. Yeah. yeah. And everyone's gonna have that sort of set point. Yeah. For some people, they're sub one eighty. Let's say same composition. Yeah. Like sub one eighty, would be like, oh my god, I'm on my yeah, ass. Yeah. For a lot of people, and yeah. for a lot of people, they could be where I am now and feel normal. Fine. Yeah. It's literally a state. A state of where, genetic yeah, genetics, point. where you are, and then also as well, like I think the the period of time, like for example, you've not felt like this before, but like you're probably gonna have weeks where you feel worse, and that's gonna oh, be mate, the case. 100%. And you'll probably look Still back. Still gotta be leaner. So. Yeah. And you'll look back at where you are now and go, I didn't actually feel that bad that day. I think one of the thing is as well though is like most people would get to this kind of level and be like, right, I'm ready, I'm stage lean. Yeah, like, because yeah, yeah. for most people, I, I think my condition is stage condition yeah, or yeah. further for most yeah, people. Yeah, I'd say so. But as I keep saying, when people are like, oh mate, you know, you've been ready for ages, or you're ready early, like you've not been ready. I'm not. You're not like, ready. No. For people that don't realise the standard at the top level of natural bodybuilding, like yeah. it is very, very good. Like I would look fat if I was to go and stand on a in a really good lineup. And even if let's say like you're a hundred percent, this is again your second prep. Like if, if you were to compare like let's say the the the, the, the holy grail of natural bodybuilding, AJ Morris. But if you were to compare AJ's conditioning like relative to like every year from when he's competed, he's got himself probably a hundred percent, and he's got sharper and better every single time. You know, for you, like I guarantee, if you were to do another prep, you'd be able to get leaner and look better. And there are like, there's always body fat to pull off. And with what we said, it's it's relative to a look. If you're just going off, okay, it's a dieting contest. Cool, your stage weight would be 150. You know, <laughs> and could you get to 150? Yeah, you could. Would you look better at 150? No, like in comparison no, to no. 158, 159, that you probably will be at let's say the finals so it's 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 all relative and i think it's one of those it's quite easy to get yourself into this kind of groove of like okay people are telling me this and this i'm ahead of this and this is where it needs to be it's like well in reality like it still needs to be better yeah, and it's irrelevant what anyone says as well yeah. like social media i remember i was looking back at some post yesterday and somebody said it was on literally on a post from like two months ago somebody was like mate you your rear shot is ready or you're one day out it's like mm. Like, like, but for, compared to now, like, I look fat. Oh, yeah, like, definitely. People don't... Again, it's more so people are either not in the industry or, again, just don't realise the standard at the top level. Yeah. Like, again, I could, I could compete this weekend in a, a natural show, but if it was a good lineup, like, let's say it was the finals from last year, yeah. I'd be horrendous. Oh, yeah. I'd, like, yeah. get smashed. Yeah. So it's like, you know, the standard is, is very high. And that's what you've got. If that's where you want to be at, you've got to get to that level, like conditioning wise. Yeah, exactly. And then even if you are that level conditioning wise, and there's four or five guys who have more muscle mass than you, you get beat. Yeah. You get beat, and you're like, ah, it is what it is. Or the standard is where you turn up and you win, and you're like, ah, oh, but nothing changes. It's only a case of bringing you 100. percent And especially with like the prep that you've set up, it kind of makes sense to be thinking, well, like right now you're gonna feel a bit meh. You're probably gonna feel worse. There's still areas to improve like your back has been very very lean not stage lean like let's say when you you know you said that one day out i know what photo it's after it was cmp day isn't it yeah 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 Cause i remember you telling me that you were like you got a comment you showed me and i was uh, like yeah, but yeah obviously it's not your back was lean then really lean but it's not stage lean it's, in my back, yeah, but it's not just your back it's everywhere no that's like, what i mean back, like, if yeah, you were to look at fine, your but... even now like your hamstrings and glutes and quads could and should be leaner like i say yeah. should be they, they shouldn't be. be for the time frame no but uh, they could be i mean I if know. you would I've got say 13 weeks until the last show it's probably not a good idea to try and be those leaner no but for the qualifying shows let's say and stuff like that like if you were to say your let's say glutes and hamstrings four weeks out from like two weeks out from a warm-up show i'd be like well, probably not for 100 percent. but yeah, the goal is not to be 100 percent. point yeah yeah that makes sense so yeah work to do as always so like i said you had the burger on friday yeah. Body weight was up a little bit. Um, Saturday, Sunday, lower expenditure days, weren't they, for you? Yeah. So what did that entail? No cardio, just steps at like a baseline, it's like 10 to 12 okay? I think so. I can't remember exactly, I'm sure. It was no CV. It was no yeah. CV Saturday, Sunday. And then back yeah, to... Yeah, I did cardio Friday, didn't I? Yeah, back Saturday, to digging. Saturday, Sunday was off. Back to digging from Monday. I think that'll work quite well for me. I think, like, having one or two mm -hmm. days where... 
I give my legs a little bit of a break each week based on how I'm feeling. And I think based on like how I have felt, it seems to be that I get towards this point in the week, especially after the Thursday rest day, again, my rest day food's like 1200 calories. Mm. Like I feel, my legs always feel really draggy going into Friday and then Friday's a leg day. And it's mm. like, it's not great, especially then doing cardio in the morning. And like by the pack, by the time that I get to train at the minute, I've done 10,000 steps plus already. Yeah. So it's like I'm going into a leg day with fatigue from yeah. like obviously the rest of the week. So I think I'm, I'm based on how I've planned it out, I'm thinking it's going to work out pretty well because it's like, right, dig, drop off a bit of fatigue over Friday, Saturday, potentially <laughs> increase food if it's needed. Like I don't, I don't think, think you'll need to. No, not this week. No. But I think in subsequent weeks, that'll probably work out well as like, basically it'll be three low days if you like or five low days realistically because the rest days are very low but when i say three i mean like three low training days two moderate training days as like a refeed like moderate to high yeah. and then i reckon i'll still be losing i can, I can still lose a decent amount with that mm. i think if anything it'll actually help speed up the process to be fair it's but one of them like you, you just know. take it yeah, day you can day, you can make the perfect plan, but the problem is at this point is it literally is a case of taking day by yeah. day, and like it's one of those like she said about body weight, you could have a bit of a stressful day or just train really really like fucking hard, bury yourself and you're a few pounds up from inflammation. You're like oh no, but in reality, like I said to you before, like you were one sixty six. No, you were a good one sixty six the Tuesday after the, the Monday and the Tuesday Monday Tuesday after the show. So that was the but case that was like yeah massive drop off yeah, in stress. Exactly. Hardly and then any you steps. were a pretty shit one seventy. <laughs> like what? what was that like literally last like week Wednesday? Two days later, yeah. yeah, two days after. So literally, it was like two days, four pounds up, no changes if anything like that. Back to digging, but that's going to be fatigue and then stress as well. Probably just kind of climbing back on yourself. Then the weekends this morning come. I was back to one sixty six. Yeah, exactly. So and like it's like an actual one sixty six. The one sixty six is after the shows weren't an accurate one sixty six. It was. But a, then also, if you were to look at an average, I guarantee if you were to well, I say I guarantee, I know your average would have been like yeah, you had a one sixty six, but you were higher yeah, the days before and days after. That average and was that's like normal. So the the week, the mock load before the fitex. I was like basically didn't lose any weight. Mm. Then the Fitex week I didn't lose any weight. Yeah. And then the week after with the drop I lost three. Three point yeah. five pounds in a week. Yeah. So it was like across those three weeks I'm still like losing about a pound a week, yeah. which is kind of what I've been losing. So yeah. it was like, okay, that's sound. And then obviously it came back up. But now it's coming back down. So like the one sixty six this morning is an actual one sixty six really. Where like yeah. it's a one sixty six with fatigue, with actually digging it's not a 166 from not training because yeah. I'd obviously like had a deload over that weekend as well. Yeah. Plus the the day before, the day before the 166 on the Monday was Josh's show day, which was a really busy day where yeah. I was like on my feet a lot, yeah. but not in a fatiguing way, just in like a, I'm standing a lot, I'm communicating with people a lot. My last meal was at like 7 p.m. and I didn't get to bed until like 11 because we had to drive back and stuff. So like, the 166 on the Monday, Tuesday after the shows was like a bit of a, like a post deload 166 yeah. or post deload low weigh in. So well, think about how every time you deload and then yeah, you exactly. get back into the gym and you gain a few pounds and yeah. you're like, oh, okay, so that's cool. what that's what happened. And I think yeah. like, obviously I should I, I know that anyway, but when you're in this position, you sort of like, oh, I should yeah, be seeing no, a new low, yeah, and it's you, like you get a bit pissed off, and it's like stupid, really. Like, I know why I've gained weight. I'd say like to any client exactly why and what's going on i'd say it to myself but i'm still then like oh yeah definitely oh, it'd be nice to see this weight like yeah but yeah it's just the position you're in at this point so yeah and then back to digging from monday really i say back to digging, but like the weekend was just let's say a little bit less expenditure and then you're now at like a legit 166 so yeah i'd see how the the next few days go um low expenditure potentially like i said i don't think it's a bad setup but also at the same time you just need to take it day by day take it day by day but that's the plan yeah. like the plan can deviate but i think it's quite a nice structure to mainly just to hold on to performance like last thing that i want is and obviously it's inevitable to an extent but last thing that i want is to be like shit i need to really dig now so performance is in the bin doesn't matter like yeah if you kind of th think about how like your performance was right at the end oh yeah and most people don't have like, any no it wasn't performance it didn't have any performance yeah. there was no performance like, it was like that's what i mean i don't yeah. want to get to that yeah, yeah. And if i can prevent that from happening which i think i can with where i'm at and how many weeks i've still got 
then like implementing those refeeds when necessary implementing the the lower expenditure days when necessary i can i think can be really beneficial yeah if i can keep my performance at least at like a like yesterday's session was a draggy session but if i look at my numbers and i look at my actual performance it's still like a 70 80 percent session yeah yeah it's not Triple. like a 90 you know, 100%, yeah, no. but it's not like a 30 yeah I haven't had any 30% sessions yet. To be fair, I say that. Like, that. I didn't really have any. Like, The only sessions that I did was like, in, and that being said, in between shows, it was like you're not really getting the same stimulus because you're just kind of moving a bit of blood, blood yeah, around. Yeah, see, I don't, but, even, I don't like that. Man. No, I, I'm not a massive fan. But then at the same time, when you're three, day, three days out and four days out, the last yeah, thing you want to be doing is my, like, Especially, I think one thing that I do need to keep in is some form of hinge, like a good level yeah. of a hinge because my back shots look so much better. Mm. my erectors look so much better yeah. like if i don't hinge for a week my back looks like i don't train yeah so like, i think i need to even like let's say i might even if, if if i've got like in between shows if i need to i might even just have like a posterior session on the, yeah. the tuesday yeah like just to keep it in and i, I might not be doing yeah. like my 180 load but even yeah. if i'm doing a 150 160 like because yeah. it makes my back look so much better yeah i posed after tuesday and uh, Sam uh, was filming, and Sam was like, Reese, your lower back looks really good. And I was like, Yeah, I can actually hip hinge now. I can actually deadlift. Yeah. Like, the second you go below a certain body well, weight, you uh, stop yeah. doing it. Yeah. Like, it's like, still the muscle just decides, oh, I'll just, I'll just, I'll come back. In, when it it's is just be inflammation. Needed. Like, yeah. if you think about it, like, if you weren't to train push for a month, oh, mate, yeah. Like, you'd look like, obviously, you'd still look like you've got muscle, but you'd no, look but it would so be, flat. It'd be a different like, look yeah. entirely. And yeah. if you, it's the same with, really, like, obviously, your erectors are involved in a lot of movements mm. as a stabilizer and, you could isolate them. You could do a, a hip extension or a hyperextension machine or whatever. But actually having a hip hinge in, like your back will look different. I don't mm. care what people say; like it will look different. And there's no there's no movements. There's no exercise you have to do. It doesn't have to be a deadlift. It could be a stiff day. It could be a dumbbell RDL. It could be this. It could be that. But having something in that does require you to actually sort of have that, that axial brace. loading and yeah. that brace and challenges your erectors. And challenges your whole back, like your whole posterior chain, in a certain hip extension movement. Your back will just look different. Yeah. Not even just from like, oh, you've grown so much, but like from a inflammation standpoint. What built it? What built it keeps it, bro. Yeah. Classic saying. So yeah, is that everything last week for you, mate? I think so. Yeah. Sound all good with me. Gaining phase. Bloods were done. Yeah, Bloods were. Go through. Uh, could do to be fair. Yeah, they were actually pretty sound. Um. My, I think everything was within range, uh, which expected my prolactin first ever time. My prolactin's been within range. Uh, I've been taking like um, a fair few supplements to try and kind of limit it. Prolactin stress hormone. Uh, it's something that I don't. You, you, if you were to speak to me, you would never say I'm stressed. But internally, I'm always a lot more stressed than I probably realise. And whenever I've had my bloods done before, my prolactin's always like doubled or tripled. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, probably not too ideal. Just being busy. Though. Um, but yeah, no. that's literally what it's about. Like. Be having stuff on and doing stuff. If like, I was to like get mine that my bloods done now, they'd be probably pretty awful. But I don't feel stressed. It's just no. that you constantly. No, no on I the never go, feel like, stressed. Yeah. I, ne I never like. I rarely will ever say, "God, I feel stressed." But I know internally, I'm like, "Okay, I've got this. I've got that." Like, I try. I, I live my life on the efficiency of like, if I can budget myself to go to the toilet, but then also while I'm going to the toilet, write an Instagram caption. I'm like, "Okay, that saves me on my yeah. walk that I can then get back to a, Mate, a form like, feedback video." I like, literally, I've started when I put my shoes on. Yeah. I'm watching trek. I'm watching training yeah, videos yeah. on the floor yeah. while I'm putting my shoes yeah. on. While I'm having a piss, there's a radiator there at home. I've got training videos on while I'm having a piss. Like. <laughs> Literally, the, when I get up in the morning and do my way and I'm getting back to, like, yeah. just short messages on WhatsApp yeah. before I get back to, like, yeah. proper all the messages. Like, yeah. So that's the reason why my practice is usually pretty high. But it actually hasn't been. So vitamin uh, B6, P5P, game changer, overdosing on that before bloods. And to be fair, probably the holiday was... A, just had loads of that before you got done. Yeah, literally loads. To be fair, annoyingly, they cancelled on me, so it actually delayed the blast starting for a few days. Oh, God, they just clearly just don't care about my bodybuilding aspirations. Uh, but no, everything was all good, pretty much. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, was there anything that I was like, oh, okay, that was slightly maybe not as expected. Um, test was at like literally 29 nanomole, which was expected from 160 milligrams per week. So that was all good. So I was actually in a natural range of tests, bro. So I've been natty. Um, everything else, estrogen was in range, which is expected. Um, there was one thing that I did look at and I was like, oh, um, I can't remember off the top of my head, 
but oh that's what it was my my thyroid t4 um under underactive i got r9 r9 ronaldo vibes because yeah. that's what happened to him that's why i don't know how i'm still fucking lean uh no to be fair it's probably through like whenever you take like growth hormone and stuff like that especially for periods of like a longer amount of time it can sometimes mess you with your t4 my T3 was in range, and obviously T3 and T4 were utilised throughout the prep. Um, but my T4 was slightly out of range, um, so potentially might have to be on t- like T4 year round, depending on how things are. I'm going to play around with it. I'm going to get blood done again in like 12 I'm weeks. I'm going to say, give it a bit it's of time. Still, come yeah, back. yeah, it's still a pit, it's, but it was very low in comparison to my T3. And mm-hmm. when I did my bloods last time, they were, they were both within range. But then at the same time, I am like still, it's only been it's been eight and a bit weeks post show and like naturally just putting on body fat and being fatter would help so i'm not going to be like okay let's just start taking t4 constantly uh however if we are looking at things from like an a, 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 a medical sense like actual thyroid and something like t4 year round isn't actually that negative if anything it would probably be a benefit if it's still going to be an issue let's say three months down the line but this is why getting blood work is important guys because you can assess and think right what do i need to deploy to potentially manipulate let's say health markers to a better standard uh even within natural settings obviously for example if you are natural you can't just be saying oh, i'm gonna start taking some t3 t4. t4 but yeah bloods were done uh training has been really really good um definitely feel like feel a lot more myself now like training's good sleeps a lot better uh everything's just kind of as it should be uh feel really full in the gym every single week i'm turning up and weights are feeling lighter and i'm enjoying like every, i'm like i trained i did an arm day i put in a like a top of day on monday so it's like arms a bit of delts and abs and calves and it was like enjoyable to be like going to the gym and being like oh yeah i want to train which i've wanted to train obviously for, probably for the last like four weeks after after like once i've actually got some body fat on me again and i feel more normal but like in a prep the last thing you're thinking of is when you're on the way to the gym like yeah i get to train it's weird isn't it yeah like, i can't remember the last time i thought yeah, I, get to train. I want to train. Yeah, it's or just I like, get I've to got, train. Yeah, it's, it's just, just it's just like I'm, I'm training. Go, I'm going to train. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that kind of itch and urge to be like, oh, I get to go to the gym today. Like I woke up on Monday and I was like, oh, I get to train today. Like when I haven't been training on Mondays and like you, when you get that sort of feel, it's, it's a like weird mm, feeling, it's a weird right? feeling. Yeah, when you've gone like through the large majority of the year and it's like, cool train day. Like it's not where I I, I perceive training in a negative sense. It's just it's like cool, go train. Yeah, it's not a negative or a positive. No, it's, it's just, just is what it is. Yeah, just training. So yeah, literally everything seems all good. Um, maybe an important announcement coming soon that I won't really touch upon. I can't delve into details yet, guys. By the time this is out, no, probably not. But something's cool is in the work, so I'm gonna do what like those Instagram. Yeah, you see on Instagram like an important announcement coming soon, and then like a time a countdown or whatever. Yet yeah, nobody actually really gives a fuck. And like, it's the same as like Nobody I actually said cares. to I said to um, Hubert today. So next Friday, um, I've got a client who's competing the following day, and we're staying in Telford. Um, so I've got an Airbnb. So Josh is coming, and I said to Hubert, Hubert's got the day off from work. So I was like, Ah, oh, sound. Why don't you come to the show? Because he's he's come to shows, but he's never like we never had a show where we're all together. So I was like, Right, I'll get an Airbnb. Um, Friday, we'll we'll head up uh, or whatever. And it, basically on Friday, we're doing like an announcement, like video thing and so i told him on his check-in i said i probably shouldn't be going into detail here i said i said and i started laughing because i was like i sound like the generic like i can't disclose i can't mm-hmm. cover in reality if hubert was to tell because i told him exactly what's happening if hubert was to go and people are going to message hubert hubert don't can say anything if he oh, was no, to tell people nobody's nobody gives message. a fuck nobody's gonna go oh my god reese has leaked what's I've happening said that. Like, it's always it, funny i've had clients a, yeah. doing shows like that they're not telling people no, about no, like, i'll tell someone that oh they're doing this show if you want to come to that and i'm like but don't tell anyone like, but then the back of your head care. yeah I, i've said that and then the back of your head i'm like no one cares yeah, don't worry no one, no one gives a fuck it's like and it's the same as when you see somebody on social media put like a countdown it's like no one no one cares bro just just Put it up when it when it, when, it, when you can. And if not, just be quiet. No one cares. So yeah, that's that. Life is good. Uh, Travis Scott's album comes out tomorrow. Utopia, um, which I'm looking forward to. Our way to Edinburgh uh, over the weekend. So I've pretty much got like busy weekends. Edinburgh this weekend with Sanaya, and I'm seeing Finley, Gulliver, and Musa. Uh, I saw Musa on Saturday. Boys. Um, yeah, the boys, the Scottish lads. Um, so yeah, going to Scotland this weekend. Next weekend, um, Telford for the Fitex, and then Finn is on stage at the A1. Uh, unfortunately, Nicola, I'm not going to be stepping hey, on stage. I'm not, I'm not announcing that. Oh, 
Oh, sorry, cannot disclose it. No. I'm being serious, I'm not, but I don't care. Uh, this will be out a day know. or so before. And also, what did you just say a minute ago regarding yeah, no one cares? Anyway, yeah, that's the show. Sorry, ruined it. But by the time this is out, it's going to be like a day or two out, and you'll probably already get in your tan. You'll probably already be getting smashed by all the big boys. Yeah. So, yeah, unfortunately, Nicola, sorry, I'm not going to be doing that show. And then the following weekend, um, it's that True Athlete, me and Sonar going on Friday. And then Sunday, I'm watching Liverpool v Chelsea, first game of the season. I've gone on holiday, so I've got good. pretty busy. Yeah, I'm just busy. Now, speaking about football. Yeah. FPL League. Ooh. Make sure you get joining. I'll put the the link on my story every now and again. So what's your team name? FK United still. Yeah. I haven't made my team. I need to. I'm gonna I'm gonna like got like two weeks. Yeah, tomorrow I think on the drive up. So now I was driving, so I'm gonna like oh, give nice. myself a bit of like put on a FPL video yeah. and then we'll do some scouting. I absolutely love it. Really? Like, yeah. You get proper into it at the start of the season, don't you? I was into it all last season to be fair. Yeah. But you like, get properly into it at the start. Yeah, but I don't know. It depends what your class is properly into it. Like, I have I'll put FPL videos on in the background while I'm doing cardio on yeah. on mute because I'm yeah. doing work. I don't watch them actually or get properly into it. Like, mm. I just quite like the thought of like it's almost the 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 fun is before the season starts trying yeah. to guess who's going to do mean, well. Yeah, I get like it. once it starts, it is still fun. But once it starts, <laughs> like you kind of already know the teams and the players that are going to do well. And also, last year was good fun. Our post workout FPL watch. Post workout meal, we had like probably more carbohydrates than what we have, we've had for like right. fucking days at this point. <laughs> Literally, me and Finn would have like probably three hundred grams plus of carbs post workout. FPL video on in the background, driving home after rather. Those wait. were the days. I can't wait to be fat. Those are the days, mate. We need to get back. To, I know we actually used to get on, used to train. That was nice. Yeah, we used Not to anymore. talk to each yeah. other. Yeah, it's sad now. All right, should we get in some questions? Hmm. Those times shall return. JP MVMT. Go to coffee orders, prep versus off season. You're, you're a coffee connoisseur I've now. I've never had a prep coffee, so I wouldn't know. Um, well, I was gonna say decaf, but that's just because usually if I'm gonna get a coffee out somewhere, mm. it's usually later in the day with Shannon. I'm an so afternoon coffee, I'd get so like, like a decaf, sugar free Americano with uh, yeah, decaf Americano with sugar free caramel syrup. Okay, that is what I'd get. On what is an Americano? Just right. a black coffee, so no milk or anything. Okay, fair enough. If it's off season, I mean, realistically, I'd get maybe get a latte instead. Yeah. But it wouldn't be much different. Maybe like if they've got like a special on, like a a pumpkin spiced one or whatever, I might try that. Cool. To be fair, one thing that I do really like is a chai coffee or chai tea or chai latte. Um, Jack, to be fair, when he, he messaged me about chai. He was saying he used to get people when he worked at Costa or somewhere, like Karen's he called them, that would like mm. moan about the chai and saying that it was wrong and stuff. And he was like, fuck off, it's just like chai. Like, chai is like a tea. It's like a cinnamon Special, kind uh, of thing. Okay. It's nice. Never tried it. I have the chai um, sugar-free syrup at home and it is really nice. Fair enough. But I've cut out my syrup. Yeah. So for me, I've never had a prepped coffee. I've only ever drank maybe 12 coffees in my entire life and they've all been in the last like two weeks three weeks i wanted to get into it because i remember i was round yours and you were like ah oh, you know when we went to a coffee shop um you said like to shannon you were like i went to a coffee shop and we sat out and it was really nice and i thought to myself it is that really sounds nice, really like peaceful coffee, yeah. that sounds really nice like so i said to sanaya i want to get into coffees cafes but, are nice yeah yeah i, I agree we uh so i said i want to get into coffees but i want to like take it easy i don't i don't like the smell of coffee i think it's way too extreme and so i like started with a tea and then i had like a sip of sanaya's coffee and we tried a few different ones and i found one that i liked so i get a skinny latte with sugar-free vanilla syrup and I, use, I get half a, pun, a pump of coffee, so I get half. Now I get a full, and that's the only ones I've really tried. So I'm a bit I'm a bit basic in the sense of I've never tried anything else. So when I said, like, an Americano, I don't even know what an Americano is. I am the least coffee experienced guy ever, but I actually really like I'm going to get one today. I'm going to get one uh, after my haircut. So, yeah. And I'm, but I'm an afternoon, like an early afternoon coffee guy. I couldn't imagine having one in the morning. I prefer a monster in the morning, like because I haven't ever had one in the morning. Like, really? I have... Coffee before my cardio. Yeah. And then I have coffee while I'm doing, like, with my meal one. I have an iced coffee. But these okay. are the ones that I just make at Never home. had an iced coffee. Nice. No. Yeah, it's nice. Bear's here. Hello, Bear. 
Oh, Showing yeah. his face. So, yeah, that's my, my go-to coffee order. And it's my only coffee order because it's the only thing I know. So, yeah, give me some give me some experience and give me some suggestions, please, guys. Uh, right, so this is a bit of a deep question. Um, advice on how to be better, a better man mentally. So how, and this is actually, it's quite funny. We, we spoke about this the other day. Bear, bless you. Go on. No, no, that's not come over here. That's, don't just walk in, sneeze. And then walk on. See you later. Bear. Bye-bye. All right, Bear is leaving. Hopefully he doesn't sneeze or knock over the cameras. So we spoke about this the other day in regards to, I think, to be a better man mentally. It's like you set yourself a goal and you fucking do it. You hold yourself accountable. You, I think... I wouldn't say a better man. I'd no, just I don't think it's a better, better man. Person. Yeah, better person. I don't think... I don't like the better man. We're in 2023. So, yeah. fellas... Like you're kind of not even allowed to say man. Yeah, like a better individual, better human. Like we're better all human. Day. Yeah better day but i think one thing is quite important is like and i think it's a sign of maturity is like being able to own up to your own shit and hold yourself accountable and get stuff done and have a bit of a backbone regarding like your mental state and what you need to do and get and just in general get stuff done like i think that's something that you grow up with keep yourself busy keep yeah. yourself occupied mentally and physically yeah. like the less active and less busy that you are I guarantee you'll feel worse yeah nobody ever's like oh, i feel great because i just don't do anything yeah not that's never the case no but no even if you feel like oh i'm really tired or i'm busy and i'm stressed like you might feel better for having a weekend off a weekend away a holiday yeah. but just not being busy and not being active and not looking after yourself like it's gonna feel awful yeah, yeah. people go on about like oh i'm just tired all the time it's like yeah because you don't do anything yeah like you have nothing to keep yourself active or keep yourself no. busy like no wonder you feel tired you you've some got no drive you've yeah. got nothing that's forcing you forwards yeah if you don't feel like you're progressing in any way because you're not yeah you're gonna feel like you're going backwards and you're gonna feel shit and it's like a reward scheme i think like for it's example like today mini wins every yeah, day yeah like today for example so i go away tomorrow to edinburgh i know tomorrow's gonna be a bit of a busy one but for like but i know saturday and sunday's check-ins i've not got that much on i've got a setup to get through today probably realistically with packing and everything for tomorrow i probably won't be done today till like 9 nine thirty. like it'll literally be a case of i'll have about half an hour to switch off and then i'm going to bed but i know that's, when i get to bed that's good no i know when i get to bed i'm going to be like and i wake up tomorrow i'm going to be like right cool cardio get that done i'm going to get my cardio done and then i'm all everything's going to be packed and i'm going to enjoy the weekend and i'm going to have like a high off me knowing that i'm not like oh I'll get that startup over the weekend i'll yeah, be a yeah. bit slack or oh, i'll get back to that check-in oh, i'm you aware get the, but, you know you get the highs from being on on top of things yeah. when, when you're not on top of things you feel worse and you're behind like, yeah even at the weekend like obviously i had lower expenditure yeah if anything i felt worse for it because it was like that i was slightly out of routine yeah what like, am i doing with my time yeah. yeah so yeah that would be one thing but then also as well like, a better man mentally like i think as well being able to work on your flaws and like i think it's something that again it's quite hard because a lot of people aren't self-aware and it's human it's human nature but i think assessing and thinking what am i not very good at or what am i like what do i not like about myself in certain situations and like trying to work on it like i, I think for example if i was we've said this before if i was to always get angry when i drive when i'm driving like yeah. this is something that again i find bizarre like road rage but i would almost have a word with myself and say you right reach you actually need to get a bit of a grip and you need to stop getting angry yeah. and i'd try and, and work, I'd work on it i wouldn't expect to be perfect but i'd work on it it's the same for example like i remember i used to say to you when we first knew each other like i'd be like oh, i can i can get my work done like when i was this is when i was like 20 at uni first year lockdown i'd wake up like any time my sleep schedule was awful like, I, st I slept a lot but i slept probably too much and now it's probably the opposite i don't sleep enough but I would not get up at the same time because I'd be like, I get everything done. But my productivity is way, way, way decreased back then in comparison to now. And I remember really? saying to myself, right, Reese, you're fucking 20 years old. Get a grip. Sort yourself out. Yeah, sort yourself out. I actually. have to say stuff like that yeah. to clients at times. They're like, oh, mate, I was on Xbox till a bit too late. And like, turn I, your Xbox off. I never Go wanna, to bed. Yeah, I never want to come across like I'm being like patronizing in no. any way. But you're 20 odd years old or whatever. Like, you don't need to be playing Xbox. It's the same way, like, how many times I've had clients where, like, oh, yeah, I got into this Netflix show and I ended up watching another episode. No, I'm going to bed. Yeah. But I don't care how good something Mate, is, I get, I'm going to bed. Me and Shannon literally watch 15 minutes of a program yeah. in an evening. Yeah. And I'm like, right, it's half eight. Yeah, bedtime. Like, shower in yeah. bed. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's like, how it should be. That's it. I don't care if it's like, oh, it's a good five. Oh, let's just oh, ten really minutes. Good. Like, no. The only thing I think I'd ever do that for would be, like, a football game on where it's, like, live and it's, like, an event. 
but like there'll be times where like if it's not Liverpool playing, I'd be like, yes, I don't care. Like I'm not I'm not staying up to watch. Uh, to be fair, that is one thing that's going to be difficult for me. Like when football's back on, if United are on in the evening, like I'm just going to go to bed. To be fair, yeah. I always did before. Be, yeah, I went to bed at half time. Group, now I'd be going stages. to bed. Yeah. In the first fifteen minutes. Group stage of the Champions League, so yeah, it'll yeah. be all right. Right. Uh, Maca Morris, who's the better MP athlete now, Reese or Finn? Oh, Finn, wait, wait, object- objectively. Done one, won one, mate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got a win, but pff, no one else was there, so like that didn't count. And I got robbed. The open class, two bros, didn't no, count. You're not counting that. No, I'm not. I got a first place medal, though. And I put up a story. So, <laughs> put up a story there, like, first place for the stat, stat class. class. It's always got to be stat third. Also, also. You know third. what it is? Mm. No, win or lose, it's always, it's always a stat, a stat always class. Stat if class. you lose, it's a stat class. No, I got, I got so top. many messages, like, well done, bro, so if deserved, you win, awesome look. Class. And I'm like, no, I looked awful, <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah, no, Finn objectively this year. So, yeah, Finn. Got yeah, no, no shame saying that. Really, really yeah, good. So good. Really, really good. So, so good. Lineup was stacked as well. Yeah, the lineup was stacked. I like think it, David I think, David versus Goliath. I think I think that's the only lineup where you could say the lineup wasn't stacked. <laughs> like, yeah, you're on about. <laughs> if there's one person who turns up, lineup. I beat stacked. the guy that came third, biggest best ever looking guy I've seen in my life. Oh, team really handsome. good. Look. Team, team handsome. Yeah, team really handsome. good. Cut that out, so I'm uh, going to get no, in trouble. No, don't cut it out. I said to Christian the day after. What was that about, Team Hanson? I just wanted to because he's relatively good looking. Does he? think he's good looking? I, I, don't know. I don't really... I don't know, mate. Maybe, yeah. maybe he is. I, 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 even if I was... I've got nothing going on, like... Pe- should, we, should, we, should, we, should we pause this and get his name and have a look and be like, oh, yeah, he's pretty fair. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not, he's not Myron Max. Max. He's Max. not Myron Max. Myron yeah. Max is Team Hanson. Like, he's Myron the Max own. is the GOAT. Yeah, like he's the the best looking guy in the yeah, world. Christian had a guy competing the next day, yeah. and I, and he didn't say anything about Team Hanson. I was like, mate, what about this guy? I was like, is he not Team Hanson? Yeah. And then he shouted it, and I was like, now he'll be thinking like, you know, you've you've not called me Hanson. Yeah. Like so, Christian, you need to call all your clients Hanson. What yeah. are you thinking? You you need to on the day. You need to motivate them and make them feel confident by calling everybody. Everybody's in Team Hanson. For their physique doesn't matter. No, it's not about the physique. Just it's about the look. face. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's why I won. Okay, uh, what footballers could you see on a bodybuilding stage? I'm going to interject. Have you seen the Yuri Tillemans uh, video that came out this morning from his debut? Oh my God. Cam, webcam, like on his chest. And you see the pace. That It was a pre-season game. You get point two of a second. The ball's coming to him. He spins and he's got three people sprinting at him full speed. And he's playing the ball off. And it literally gave me like, my heart rate went up. I watched it during my cardio. Yeah, yeah. My heart rate was higher because I was like, that is so intense. You don't realise. Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah. away from that, what footballers could you see on a bodybuilding stage? Uh, well, Salah. He, he's, yeah, Sa- Salah would be, his delts are ridiculous. And he's got, I reckon Salah on like a men's physique stage would be sound now. He'd be good. He'd be good now. Um, I'd have a trial I'd win most shows. Yeah, he would. Do you remember Gary Cahill, mate? He had like some serious arms on him back in the day. Really? Like, yeah, Gary Cahill used to be pretty jacked. Um, I think I've talked about who else. Ronaldo. Yeah, like peak Ronaldo, like Real Madrid, like 13, 14, be before he downsized. Model. Yeah, before he downsized, after he got a few like knee injuries and like the Euros and stuff, like Ronaldo was a lot bigger. I think people forget that. Like, two th- like early 2010s, Ronaldo was a lot bigger than he was like now and like late 2010s. They'd be the ones on top of my head. Liam Turner. Are there any movements you think are good on a vertical smith, but not on angled smith? I think a hip thrust and a smith machine squat are generally better on a vertical. Yeah. Um, they're not bad on an angled, but you just have to play around with it a little bit more. It's a bit more awkward. But I think pressing too far. I prefer it on a vertical, but it's fine on an angled if you're pressing sort of up and back. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't make too much of a difference. It depends how steep the angle is, but yeah. like not many Smiths are that steep of an angle, really, are they? Other than the one at um, Warehouse, it's not that steep an angle. It's just heavy. Heavy Life and sticky. One. It's not that steep. Yeah. It's just stupidly heavy and sticky and yeah. old and cold. That's old and cold. Yeah. Worst combination for how things are. Um, okay, so max and min timing between meals. Is that Kane Hoyley by any chance? Yes, is he asked the same question to you? Yeah. He clearly really... Kane, you really want need the answer. Need to know. I need to know. Kane, how long have you been having? Hey, mate, I've been having 10 minutes in between. Hey, mate, I've not eaten for 10 days. Is that all right? <laughs> this is one of those where I think like... So if we're going off like, let's say, an actual answer, you'd say anywhere from like two and a half to four hours to stimulate MPS. The leaner you are, that's going to play a role. Uh, where your meals are placed, 
what's going to play a role. And also, like, if anything, just getting in the food on a daily basis is the most important thing here. Like, that's not to say, please eat five meals within an hour. We eat one meal of like, yeah. 300 protein. Yeah, and then just do that. But I think a lot of times, like, you cannot, you could like, argue and just look at your day and look at how your day is set up. And what, where can you place your four to six meals, probably? Most likely, most people are eating between there for bodybuilding goals. Where can you place your four to six meals that's going to be of ease to you that you can keep consistent? you know yeah i'd say no sooner than two hours apart yeah but it does depend like you say like rate of digestion the amount of food that you're eating the macro balance of that meal like if it's just a protein serving on its own with like zero carb zero fat you could easily eat within two hours later yeah if it's a big meal with a lot of carbs a lot of fats like if it's let's say quite a a dense meal in terms of the protein source maybe it's something like a a beef or a steak like a steak meal rather than like a whey isolate meal like that meal is going to take a lot longer to digest but the protein know that. from that meal is going to take longer That's... to actually utilize mm. and spike mps you'd feel it yeah 100 percent. that's you, the thing you, like no i think it's one of those you could easily ask a coach or ask two fantastic podcast hosts who are also coaches but you could also just give it a go and say you know what i've probably had a bit too soon there well, it's like, like for example my first meal is quite a big meal in terms of volume yeah. still like obviously it's not a lot of food in terms of total calories but it's a big meal it's 200 grams of egg whites 100 grams of lettuce four turkey bacon rashers mm. it's a good meal it's a decent sized meal i then don't eat for like four hours until my pre-workout meal yeah or th- three to four hours which is again another decent sized meal it's a, a chicken and rice meal with again veg salad then i don't eat again for another few hours because i'm training but then my post-workout meal is literally just whey isolate. Mm. That's it. But then I eat within two hours. Right? I don't wait three, four hours. I eat within two hours of that because it's a much smaller meal that's going to be utilised a lot quicker post-workout. So then I have a cream of rice meal. This is just a standard training day, which again, that meal's slightly larger but not major. And then I eat again about two hours later. Again, this is post-workout where I'm in a better position to utilise food. I'm going to be digesting meals quicker. Yeah. So it, like even with that, that's structured on my workload and how my days suit but it also makes sense from a food volume perspective from a satiation perspective it makes sense like later in the day it's nice for me to be able to eat every couple of hours when i've not got as much work on yeah i'm still working but i've not got as much work on whereas in the morning when i've got all my checkings to do i don't want to be eating every two hours i've got checkings to do like so it's like you can set it out like that yeah my rest days i literally i push my first meal back it comes back earlier when I'm, my food is higher on rest days but like right now I'm eating at half ten I then eat at half two I then from that point onwards I'm eating every two and a half to two hours on rest days and that's just because I can get most of my work done so I get to like 5.30 and I've only had three meals but then I'm getting my next like if we're including that 5.30 meal I'm getting those three meals every two hours from that point so it's like uh, in the morning it's like well I have like th- four hours worth of fasting or three hours worth of fasting I get cardio done I get a good amount of work done and then we'll do another like three hours worth of like in between three and a half hours worth sometimes in between my next meal but that suits me I can get my work done I enjoy it and if anything I quite like not having to eat straight away when I yeah. when I wake up it's, I, I do it on a training day because I have to to get the food in relative to training but on non-training days if I don't want to I don't want to so that's what I do so yeah uh, it's my question mate yeah, let's get let's rattle through. We've got five minutes. Okay. Did you both have another job before becoming online coaches slash competitors? We've been asked that before. Yeah. Yeah. I worked for my mum and then I did a shit fucking restaurant job when I was like 16. I was a PT before online coaching. And then before that, I worked at Next. I worked at uh, the cinema. I worked at a restaurant. I worked in a catering job. Plenty of different ones. Yeah. Should you still train on no carb days at the end of a cut? ideally not no but carb days, bro? if you had to I would argue you could but you should ideally set yourself in a position where you don't have to do that Yeah. Uh, Jake Byers if a client played football would you add calories to their match days as they burn so many this is something that like it depends on it's any sport depends yeah. on the individual you're better off just gathering data for example if you have a client who loses three pounds after every football match then you could go we probably need more food on those days or even the following days um same with like football training or any kind of sport that they do it's just it's another form of expenditure it's another form of output that requires more calories for recovery but also to fuel that output so yeah it's likely that they would have higher food on those days or even on the subsequent days to sort of refuel yeah cool cool how many questions do you have one one sound i've got one as well okay 
who has the worst and best haircut? Well, worst and best, well, that's a bit of a poorly answered. Mm, my, my haircut is, it depends on the day. Sometimes, like, I don't even know now, it might be in a nice straight line, it might not. Yeah. Sometimes it wants to be on. And the brackets was have an argument like last week. So we need to get in an argument. Mate, your trim's so dead. I haven't got the energy, mate. Your trim's dead. Yeah, trim shit. Yeah. Miles Mason, last question. Finish off with a football one. Are you happy with United's transfer window? Who else would you like? I assume a nine. So we've got Mount and Anana, which I like. I like Anana a lot. Mount, yeah. I think, is okay. I, I'm not excited by Mount. I'm excited by Anana. It's funny. I like Mason Mount. And Finn's always wrong, been no. a bit of a Mason he, Mount. Not just, a hater, just a very mid. I think he's good. I think he's a good player. Yeah, he's, he's all right. He's a decent player. He's not. I like, don't think he takes you up oh, a level. What a signing! No. If you were to have signed Caicedo. He does take us up a level because it means that we've got a stronger bench. Like Ericsson's on the bench. I agree, but I don't think like if you were to have had Caicedo, Casemiro, and Bruno, that's a genuinely fantastic midfield. Yeah. I think Bruno, um, Mount, and Casemiro. I think there's flaws there. If I'm honest, and I think Mount is on his own sound. I just think as a collective with United's team, I don't think it's like no, it's not anything exciting. No. But Anana's exciting. Yeah. Um, we're gonna, we we will get Hoyland, I believe, and let's not. My sources are telling me. It's not, fin, fin no, sources are saying yeah. it's not overly <laughs> exciting Hoyland, but you know, I think in two three years, I think he could be. Do you think? Well, no, it may. He's like he's a young lad. It's not like oh, it's yeah, not like getting yeah. Kane. No, like, we no. should be. We're at that. We're the club that should be getting Kane or getting Osman. Awesome really, like mm, you say that. That's the United mentality of like we're yeah, this. But, but, no, but mate, we're the second biggest club in the world. Yeah, and, and they are like you can't say they're not Real Madrid and then United like that's realistically facts in terms of fan base and yeah I'm not saying they're not like, but I think value. players there's players and there's there's, there's camera's going to cut out sorry guys the camera cut out um, but yeah we were speaking about football I think we'll get Hoyland I'm pretty sure we'll get Hoyland in the next like week or so mm. I think that's a decent signing but it's nothing overly exciting but in a couple of years it could be I think we're going to get Amrabat which I actually really like I, I think, think it's really a very good, good Casemiro yeah. backup and play alongside Casemiro. And a squad in player, way better good, than Fred. Like, tough games. Physically very good. Yeah, I think he's very, yeah, very good yeah. at the World Cup. Yeah, I, I think he was good in that final. Obviously, I've not yeah. watched much more of him. Um, other than that, I think we should still get another centre back. Get that would mean we can get rid of Maguire, but I don't think we're going to. Um, I wouldn't say. I've, oh, what an amazing window! What do you think of Liverpool's it's window decent. so far? We need another striker as well, not just Hoyland. Yeah. Liverpool, I think Liverpool's is good. If they get Lavia, it's very good. But it's pretty much like I think that's on. Yeah. It came out this morning. That apparently but I do like think having a completely new midfield oh, it's risky, will take some time. Yeah, I like, think getting just Lavia. I think Liverpool are either challenge silly. for the title or they fall short of the top four. We're again. not challenging for a title with Lavia as a DM. I think you could with. I, I think with Klopp and with how Liverpool can be. Yeah. They could. That's what if I mean. we get I on a good run. I think it's one of the yeah. other. If it's we get on a good run, really yeah. good. Or they come fifth again. If you were to say, like, let's say we start well, everything gels well, and like come Christmas we're top, wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. It also wouldn't surprise me if we lose. If you're seventh. Yeah, three or four games yeah. because of just inexperience. Whereas like, I think, and I, I might be wrong, but I think with United there's more chance that we'll be around that third throughout the yeah. majority of the season. Yeah, I think that the games against, like, like our games last year summed us up like, against United really well. First game, flat as anything at Old Trafford, got battered really. And then this, the next game, we absolutely slapped you off the park because we were firing all cylinders. Yeah. And that. We were also off. But then if you look at Liverpool in some games last season, we were really like, yeah, the probably the best. That, you lost to yeah, Bournemouth yeah, we were literally now. like the best team in the world for some games. Then we looked awful. Yeah. So, yeah. Liverpool's signing so far Sabozlai looks really good from what I've seen uh, granted I've only watched him probably four times uh, McAllister I think is a very very good signing I think that's like a perfect Especially signing for that price. yeah and then Lavia I think is really really exciting uh, I think he's got the credentials of a world class defensive mid but I don't think he's a world class defensive mid now I think no, not yet. another year or two he, I think he'll be really good but I think if you were to keep Fab and have him as a rotation, awesome, to get rid of Fabinho and have him as your starting yeah, defensive yeah. mid for a team that wants to be, like, say, challenging or at least in a top four battle, I think it's a bit risky. But exciting, because like, forward line, firepower's there. I think Gakpo, Nunes, Diaz, I think Jota, Nunes will have a better season. Yeah, I agree. He scored three goals already in pre-season. Yeah, too. I think he might get a, b- a bit more game time and wouldn't surprise me if he gets a good amount of goals. I think he will with our midfield now that we can actually create, yeah. because we've never had midfielders who create. I think Hendo, off, Fab, and off. with inverted trend yeah yeah I think it'll be good so yeah it's going to be a good season hopefully that's that football and once you're in you're in 
Hopefully everyone's Join enjoyed. The FPL League. Join the FPL. We'll leave a link. Well, hundred pounds for the winner. Leave a link in the bio or link, uh, like link maybe on the story. Link on the stories. Yeah. Now and again, I'll put a link in the bio. I'll cool. remember in the caption. Right there we go. Thanks as always, guys. Thanks for story tags. Catch you guys in the next episode. See you later.